Hey everybody, Ed O here, and the amazing folks at Game One Games were gracious enough to send me a copy of Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea, designed by Scott Alms, and this game is gigantic. If you're not, if this, if you're familiar with Game One Games, but this seems weird, it's probably because they're the tiny epic guys. So, like, wah, wah, this is a huge game. Now, Ultimately, in terms of complexity, it's not heads and heels over the Tiny Epic stuff because the Tiny Epic stuff is reasonably dense and complex, right? The board space of Tiny Epic Quest, which is fantastic, is about the same size board space as this giant game. But um, I'm not taking this out of the box. Actually, what I ended up doing was some B-roll of the game, which I'll lace into this uh, video because it's just such a big table presence and everything you're pulling out. But this game has great board, it has miniatures, really nice detail on the miniatures um, for all of the different units, as well as constructs for your main base, uh, your capital city, and your turrets, and for your character slash ships um, for each of the different races. This game is one to four players. There's a five to six player expansion, which I, I believe is almost as big a, a box. It's like four more races, um, and you the board in this box flips over and you can find it with a six player board, but I haven't played the five or six player game. So um, this is just focused on Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea. But um, this game is excellent. Now, I don't have a lot of depth of experience with heavy war games and miniature games. So one of the things that I hesitate in a review like this is it's hard for me to say, you know what, this game ranks between these two other games a fan of the genre might know and understand. Like, I don't have that lexicon or that, um, you know, knowledge base. So I really can only express it in the, the fun and engagement that I've had with this title and sort of put in that space of if you're somebody who primarily plays 45 to hour or even 90 minute games, um, what are you going to get if you move into this meteor two hour, two hour plus games? It says 30 per player, but depending on how you play, it can, can extend. And it's certainly not less than 30 per player, um, perhaps in a two player game if things are really, really zippy. But I mean, it is a meaty experience. And it's also an experience, well, for one, you're not going to play, you have to build some constructs and get things going. So expect. Um, a little bit of prep time for your first game. It all fits in the box nicely once they got inserts. It's gorgeous on the inside. Um, so expect some prep. And the rules are pretty compact, but there are just a lot of details and specifics and cases and phases. And so, you know, you're going to have to sit down and the whole table is going to learn the game. One of the things I'll say about this game is Here's a Land Area Sea is a game that requires you to play it. You gotta play it and learn and play some more. And you're really not into it until you start learning what all the different races are, what their abilities are. Until you do that, you have a lot of across the table, like, wait, wait do you have a buff, a benefit, that kind of thing? So, uh, you know, this isn't a one and done. This is a game where you really like the theme, you really like the experience, you've been looking for a meaty table war, Warcraft type game, and it fits the bill. So let's talk about that. So again, I'm a big fan of this game. I'm looking forward to playing it more and more. It definitely delivers an experience that's close to my heart. I love Warcraft. I love Warcraft. I've been playing Warcraft since Orcs versus Humans, right? And like, well, I don't even remember how old I was, but an old PC game ran Warcraft 2 and 3, and I'm still playing WoW. And so I've even purchased and had a number of the Warcraft Blizzard games or branded games, the big World of Warcraft one, the adventure game, there's the hexagonal um, Warcraft game. That one I haven't, I didn't own, but I was looking at it when I was comparing it to this. And I have to say, it is so evocative to me of playing Warcraft. And again, that's not gonna be resonate with everybody, but if it resonates with you, you gotta take a look at this game. You start 
on your island, there are four islands on the board, and you are going to be trying to, as it says on the box, explore, explore expand, exploit, and exterminate. Uh, and actually, each of these is a win condition that triggers the end of the game. It's a really neat concept, and I've always been a fan of Scott's games. But so, if as you move around the board, there are these tiles that flip over that are really great. They are interesting. Some of them give you just instant resources. Some of them let you convert units. Some of them let you um, are victory points at the end of the game if you control that space. Some of them are defensive. So neat tiles, and and you have land units, you have air units, and you have sea units. Um, but as you explore those tiles, if you explore all the tiles on the board, game's over, one last round. Everything is the end of the game, one final round for all players. Um, expand is... Explore, that's Explore. Expand, I might get Expand and Exploit differently, but Expand, I believe, is... It's not critical, I'm not sure. But Expand is if you've um, crit, uh, built all of your units. If anyone finishes building all their units, then it triggers the end of the game. Exploit is you have these towers that you can place and be they become like travel points for you on the map. If you place each of your towers, which requires you to be in every zone because you can't put two towers in one zone, if you place every tower, that signals the end of the game. And lastly, if exterminate, if you take out another player, <clears throat> they're done. They can't win. Otherwise, it's a victory point game. They can't win and... Um, you you finish the round and then score the game. And, um, you know, what you're going to be doing is building your castle or your keep or your town hall or your capital city, whatever they want to call it, and you're recruiting units, you're building bu buildings, you're using those units to move around the map to, map, to gain resources, to farm resources, to bring it back, and then you're leveling up your buildings Leveling up your, your, your capital city also levels up all of your towns. Like, if you've played Warcraft, right, like, like you're unlocking the, this tree of things where they get more powerful as you go. Each of the major buildings gives you a hero unit, all of which have their own special abilities, all of which level with your capital city, or you get um, your, 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 war, your ship or your dragon, eagle, whatever, whichever race you are is different. Um... And it, it, it's slick, it's fast, it works. I think that the um, combat is basically card combat, like, uh, um, you know, like a game like Strife or like um, Confrontation, where you've got everyone has the same card, the two people fighting have the same card, um, but some of them counter each other and some of them give you different buffs, but you need certain units to do certain ones and they have resource costs, so you're trying to figure out what other players are going to use. Uh, but it resolves combat really easy. It's just attack value, defense value, attacker needs to be better, defender wins ties type of thing. But <clears throat> it works really quick, and um, and it, it, it feels good. It On your turn, you, it's action selection, but they have this nice set of action selections. There's two types. One type is an action selection that is your capital city that anyone can copy. So if I build with my like one or two action tokens, then anyone else can take a chance to build if they have a surf or a peon or whatever character to do it. Then on the other side, there are these like command actions, like move and move your ship and cast spells, which only you get. People don't get to copy you, but if you do it and you have a surf, you can use it to get a second action for free. So you've, there's this great economy of action points and maximizing your turn, and it really works. Um, so, this game is super cool. You know, I think you gotta want a game that's big, you gotta want a game that's long, you gotta want a game that you're like, yeah, I'm gonna play this with my kids, or I'm gonna play this with my great group of friends like a bunch of times, uh, because getting into it, learning the flow, learning the characters, learning sort of where the abilities tweak is a big part of it. Um, but it was very satisfying, nice sense of, arc, nice sense of conflict, everything sort of, everyone's ex trying, you know, building, 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 but then as units get killed, they go back into your supply so that you have different end games that are like moving back and forth, scoring with types, different races get different bonuses, some critiques. So, so, I dig this game.
thank you. I'm gonna keep this game. Um, but I do have some critiques, okay? One, as much as I like that action selection system, um, boy, it, it does slow things down at times. Like, it's zippy, but rather than a game like Scythe or Charterstone or, <laughs> or any of them, or Concordia, <coughs> where choices and action selections are simple and it's rotating around the table, because every time somebody else does something on the left side, I have an option of copying them, I sort of have to be reevaluating all the time. It's hard for it to get in that flow of like, it does get there and you can be predictive and you're like, wow, they're really going to build. But then if they don't, you got to look at it. So it's, um, that bothers me a little bit. I think, I think it's fine. It works and it's still pretty smooth. It's still pretty smooth, but <clears throat> If somebody suffers a little bit from AP and reevaluating, there's a lot of, of eva board evaluation there. Two, the miniatures are awesome. They really impressed me. I can't say comparatively how they rank other miniatures. Look at some other review site, but it's really nice. And I'm sure they're even better painted. But when they're not painted, across the board, they sort of look alike. And that's not fair. Physically, this guy's got his arm up here with this weapon, and this guy's this way, and this one's an orc, like... But, at a quick glance, they can look pretty similar, especially if you're trying to understand what somebody has in there, like, how many resources they have left. And I just think there are a few extra things that could have been done to assist, whether that's a different base, and I'm probably going to paint the bottoms of mine just to, like, make eyeballing it quicker. But, like, I would have, even though it might not have been proportional, I would have made all the serfs and peons 15% smaller. That would have gone a huge way to, and they are a little smaller, but they're not like enough that you could say, like, oh, I, that those are the smaller baby units or worker units. I think something like that would have gone a really long way for board clarity. Uh, the game board looks nice, but for me, it's a little dull. Um, I think it, 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 it could have had more life to it. Um, what are my other quibbles? I feel like, um, so I talked about the action selection. I talked about the miniature. Oh, combat. Super interesting, compelling combat. The spells before, the interrupts, the tactics cards. Like, I love that type of combat. But there, it's pretty tight and pretty vicious. Like, unless you totally overpower somebody, everyone's got fair game. It sort of has that you know, confrontation, like, no, if they play the opposite card you are doing, they're going to be competitive. And I think it's good, but because of that, evaluating the, and then there's all these other abilities and things that add up, and it's like evaluating the exact, how many hit points that player has, how many, or whatever, attack defense points, how much magic they have to use to cast the spells, what if they do this, what if they do that, what are the abilities, what levels their castle at, you, you, um, it's just a lot to, to figure out. And then they can like, uh, like sack a guy to get magic. So you can't even really evaluate it. I can't say that there was, you know, this is a lovingly crafted, wonderful send off and, 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 and let's make Warcraft two type of game. You don't need oil. <laughs> No more oil, but it, it's great. But I just, I felt like it was, it's a little bit crunchier than I'd like and a little too many variables. Um, also, you know, as I said, getting, playing more is better, but you can sort of, um, there's so many parallel ways you can advance, which makes for lots of different strategies, but you can also get this multiplica multiplier effect where you're leveling up your castle. So you can find yourself like gaining seven new things, like, all your buildings gain a new ability, and your heroes gain a new ability when you level up to tier three. And so, especially for starting, you're like, eh, and you got to figure it all out. So that's something you, over time you'll get, but it 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 knocks you out a little bit harder than I would I would like. Um, I think that's the long and short of it. I thought it was great. I really enjoyed it happily play it more and more and more, and as I said, I will be. Uh, even Emily, who um, I thought maybe was getting ground out, sort of 
was like, hey, we should play head to head. <laughs> so that'll be fun. But, um, so. <laughs> Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea. Hey everybody, Edo here, and thanks for watching Gaming with Edo. Reviews over here on this playlist, League and Insider videos over here on this one. Subscribe, share, all that good stuff, but most importantly, play some great games. Thanks. Bye.